have you ever looked at a bundle of fabric that you have and wonder what you were thinking, why you bought it, or what you thought you were going to make with it? Well, this is that for me. I'm Leah Louise. Welcome to Inspired Quilting by Leah Louise. And I'm excited to have you here today. I want to show you this quilt. Check it out behind me. See all those bright colors, those beautiful charm squares splashed across that quilt with some other smaller blocks, sort of like a confetti background sprinkled in there as well. It makes a beautiful quilt that's bright and vibrant and colorful, and it looks fabulous. And I want to show you how to make this quilt, but first, look at the quilt next to it. Do you see that white on white quilt? Can you believe these are both the same pattern? That's what's so surprising about this block. It is so versatile. You can do so much with it and make it look completely different. So let me show you how we can do this. Let's get started. Look at these fabulous charm squares in these bright colors. They just want to scream off the screen and jump out and touch someone. I love these and I'm so excited. Now, isn't it funny sometimes we we have fabric that we sit on for a really long time because we think, oh, what am I going to do with that? And all these colors were mixed in with these browns and beiges and grays. And, and this was like a hundred pack I got for very little money, which is why I bought it. And I thought, oh, I'll come up with something. Well, last night I came across it and I started pulling out some charms. And look at what I found. This is so, so exciting. And so I have 45 here. And what we're going to do is we're going to put these together into a nine patch. We're going to make a disappearing nine patch. So we'll cut that nine patch into quadrants. We're going to repiece it into a four patch. And we are going to have a fabulous quilt. Wait until you see this. Do you remember this block? We just did this recently. And I love this particular layout. And what really strikes me in this are these little bolts of color that just jump right out and that's what I'm intending these to be. So we're going to have four colors in each of our corners of the nine patches with this bright one in the middle and that's the one that's going to be setting off some really dynamic design into our pattern. So the other thing I needed though was some white fabric. Now I came across this late last night and I pulled it together and I thought I need some white fabric. What am I going to use? Because I don't have anything other than flannel, which wouldn't work for this. Well, a friend had asked me some time ago if I wanted her old, um, what are they called? Mattress covers. You, know, you have the mattress skirt and it has the little, little flat part that goes, that holds the skirt up so it goes along the edge of the bed mattress nice and neat. Well, when I looked and saw it's 100% cotton, it's in great shape, it's not stained, it's practically new, I said, oh yes, I can make something with that. So I guess the, the point I want to share here is I am using what's been sitting around in my sewing room for at least a year now and I've done nothing with. And I took a look at it last night and said, what can I do with this? And look at what I found. This is going to be a beautiful quilt with some fabulous color. And it's really going to be be a showstopper, grab your eye kind of a quilt. So let me get started. I'm going to get some things laid out, but I was just anxious to get you to see these colors before I cut into anything. And here we go. I absolutely love the creative process, especially with color and fabrics and how one thing leads to another. So I was really excited cutting out um, that bed skirt. And I got the, let's see, I needed 48 for this quilt. And I got the extra 42 pieces, so I have another whole charm square full of that white cotton, which is fantastic. And this is all that was left. How perfect is that? Pulling that out of an old box of stuff that I didn't know what I was ever going to do with. And so since I had so many white squares, I thought, oh, I need to bump this up a little bit. So instead of nine blocks of the disappearing nine patch, we're going to make 12. And that will make this quilt increase from 39 inches square to 39 by 52, which makes it a great lap size quilt and so perfect for gifting. So that's where we're heading. I just had to show that before I started cutting it all up because I was really excited and I love how this is coming together. All the pieces and parts are there and we're going to make a gorgeous quilt. Let's take a look at how to put these nine patch together with the charm squares. 
the pattern that we want is going to alternate with the background and then the dominant prints. So the dominants are going to be in the five primary blocks. These are going to be remaining in their full size. This is going to be cut in half and become our contrast that will create the um, sort of like confetti pattern throughout. Um, I really like this layout. I think you're going to have fun with it. So the first thing we do is we lay out our nine patch the way we want it, and we sew these strips together. So we have two outside strips in the middle, and this is going to be the square in the center, and you'll notice how we press, press to the outside on these two side pieces, and in the middle we go towards the center. Then once these are sewn into their strips and pressed, now we're going to piece our block together. First thing we do is we line these seams up, we sew our quarter inch, and we press that to the outside, and now we're going to do the same thing here, and let me show you a finished one and then that gets pressed to the outside. So this is what the finished block is going to look like on the underside where it's pressed. So everything gets pressed outward and it's just going to make it so much easier when we put it together. It really is worth your time to do. But I wanna show you um, some of these blocks. I think they came out wonderful. Now keep in mind, these are the outer blocks that are gonna remain intact. This is the one that's going to be cut. So I wanted to put that one that's in the center, the darker of the fabrics, because then as that spread out amongst these white blocks and strips after they're cut, they're really going to stand out a lot better. Now this one, you may or may not pick up that I made a mistake and I switched those two. I meant for that to be in the, actually I meant for this one to be in the middle, but I'm okay. It's going to get cut up. It's going to be spread around and getting one out of whack. I'm not worried about, so I left that alone. Um, there are things that are worth fretting over and other things that simply aren't. Now this I really like, purple and yellow. Again, it's about contrast, and purple and yellow is a good one, just like the blues and the yellows, but look at those reds. Those are gonna work out really well. And what else do I have here? So here is some kind of lime greens with a bit of purple and orange and oh, we're getting down to the bottom of the pile here. Here's some blue and purple with yellow in the center. I like these tealy greens with that sort of uh, really deep red. I think that's going to look wonderful. And look at these. Oh my goodness. Those chartreuse with the orange in there. That's going to be great. And some greens with the blue. So these all work really well. Now I have a total of 12 nine patch blocks. What I'm going to do is cut each of them into quadrants and we're going to create a four patch. So let me show you how I'm going to do that. Let me get these two finished up sewing and get those pressed and then we'll come back, we'll cut them up and I'll show you how this block is going to go together. You're gonna to love it, it's so simple. Now that we've sewn everything together, pressed it, it looks beautiful, we're going to cut it apart. But first what I wanted to do is since I have 12 different blocks. I wanted to divide them up into three different piles. So as I'm sewing, I can just draw from my pile and have a mixed um, batch of blocks to draw from. And I'll show you more about that in a moment. But what I did want to show you first is what I did is group them into sort of color groups. This is my um, blues and greens for the most part, some teals. This is red, orange, some of the bright green, yellow kind of colors, and this primarily um, purple and, and pink kind of colors that are mixed up. And what I'm going to do, let me grab my ruler here, is show you how to cut these. Now, if you need a little more information about making these blocks, if you want a little more detailed instruction, um, the video prior to this that I just did, uh, goes over that in more detail because we made the same block and it worked out really well. So I'll make a link up above here that you can get as well as a link down below where you can find that information. Now what I'm doing here is I got to cut this right down the middle. This measures 14 inches and while I can put it on the grid and cut it at 7 to get my middle, I want to make sure that I have exactly 
that two and a quarter inch on each side so that this block is cut in half and not a little wonky or lopsided. And by measuring from the center, then I'm going to get a really good clean cut. So I'm lining my ruler up at two and a quarter inches, and then I just take my other little ruler and make sure I've got two and a quarter on that side before I cut. And now I know that my blocks are going to be nice and even. And for now, I'm just going to put them all in the same direction. Let's see how we do that. And so I'm going to make four piles. And I'm going to take the next one and do the same thing. So while I continue cutting on this, I will then get everything ready and then we'll start piecing our blocks. What we're going to do once we have all these quadrants cut is create a four patch. And that's where we're going to get the pattern that I'm so excited to show you. And it's going to really be bold and bright with all these colors. And I think you're going to love it. So let me finish cutting these and I'll show you what we're doing next. With all our nine patch blocks cut into quadrants, we're now going to create our four patch that's going to create the pattern for our quilt top. And so each pile should have 12 blocks. And what we're going to do is divide this pile into three individual. We'll take one block off the top and add it to each of these smaller piles. And we may get a little bit of duplication here and there. And you can take a look and see this has a lot of low colors. And I think I want to maybe bring that over here to brighten that up. And let's take a red out and put that here. And then I feel better. These look good. So now that we have these four blocks, we're going to create our final four square. So let me get four of these together and show you how this block will work. Now, when we made our block originally before we cut them, this is basically how we did it. We had a nine patch that we cut in four. Now we're going to rearrange these in order to create our pattern. And what we're going to do is circle around and twist these. And, and if you saw the last video, it's sort of like a square dance where someone calls out and takes calls out how many steps you take in each direction. So we're taking steps to the right. This one will remain the same. This turns one step to the right. This turns two steps. That's one and two steps. This turns three. One, two, and three. And this is what our block's going to look like. So you recognize this as a pattern that is commonly called um, tumbling blocks or tumbling squares or tumbling charms. But what's great about the setup of how this nine patch is put together, this center block that we cut up now becomes another random diagonal pattern that looks really wonderful against these larger squares. The second pattern that you get is this diagonal of the large, the small, the large, and the small. So let me go ahead and put these together and I'm going to show you what these blocks look like individually and then how we're going to put them together. We're almost there. Here we have a beautiful pile of wonderful quilt blocks ready to be pieced into a final quilt. I do want to show you real quick how to press these blocks once they're pieced. So we have the four quadrants. We sew two together, top and bottom, and then put them together with one seam. When you're doing these two, uh, connecting these two pieces on your four patch, make sure these seams nest and that they're pressed in the opposite direction. And whatever way you do this, where the seam is pressed here and here, do it the same on all your blocks. That's just going to make the um, final sewing a lot easier if everything's going in the same direction. Now, I press these well, and then I sewed this seam, and I set the seam. I came in and pressed it with a good hot iron. I made sure everything was nice and flat. 
and I'm not going to iron this seam one way or the other because as we attach these blocks together, some are going to go up and some are going to go down depending on which way uh, the blocks all come together. So I prefer just to keep them unpressed and then when we put the blocks together, we're good to go. When these are being assembled, remember this is your top. Now, don't confuse this one with this one. See, this is on this side. That's not what we want. We want the one that is together where they share a seam line like this. So we have this diagonal, and then these two go this way. But this is going to be your top and center for all your blocks as you're putting your quilt together. So this would be next. Now, maybe you don't want two greens, so you can take this one and say, well, I'm going to put a red one there. And we just go through and we place these. And as long as we keep these in the upper corner or in the upper top, look at that, I already made a mistake. I turned that one upside down. There we go, that's better. So we turn this um, with all of them going up like that and just lay it out and let it... Uh, let it go together. These blocks have all been mixed with a multitude of colors. You're not going to have to worry too much about repetition if you used a lot of colors. Most of these, for me, they were all one of a kind. So while there may be similar shades, they're not going to be the exact same block. So I'm okay just putting it together and letting it fall randomly. Now, you're going to have three blocks wide by four blocks. And what I recommend doing is doing, I would say, probably do the three across with four rows. So we're going to go down and do one, two, three, four, then come back and add your third block. And that's probably the way that I think would be the easiest. And then once we're there, we give it a press, and this is done. This goes together very, very quickly. This is easily an afternoon quilt. And I just, I love all the the colors and how well they go together and it's just this bright vibrant pattern and i love the little confetti blocks i know they're bigger than the usual confetti the confetti usually is a little tiny bit but i think it looks wonderful and it's bright it's attractive and it's really an attention getter so let me put this together and i'm going to show you what this finished quilt looks like we're just about there. And this sweet little quilt is finished with all these bright, bold colors. Just look at how they work together and create such a gorgeous quilt top. All these colors just mix well together and the little bits of color. And I love the diagonal lines here. And these are sort of the wavy diagonals, but you notice we also have this diagonal as well. I want you to see the actual blocks here. Lay this out right here. We have one block, two blocks, and then here's the third block and the fourth. So you can see how big those blocks are. They finish at, um, let's see, I think it's 13, 13 inches is what they finish at. Um, so it makes for a good size block, which means the, the final assembly of this quilt goes quick because you have all these large four patches pre-made and it just makes it so much easier putting it together. Now you can still go through and go single block at a time, but you're twisting and turning all these other you know these blocks to try and get them in the right pattern it's just so much easier to go with a four patch get everything laid out the same and then just work those four patches together into uh into your larger quilt but these these colors just look beautiful there's just some really great combinations and it went together very simply i think this is going to be a, uh, a new fun pattern to play with. The white on white turned out really well. And now we have it in bold color. What a fun pattern this is.
I hope you get a chance to make it yourself. I'm so glad you're here with me today. Thanks for watching and please subscribe.